I don't know what's worse, doing this in the cold or doing it in the middle of summer when it's really hot. But welcome back everybody to another van build video. Today I'm going to be trying to install an inverter into the van. If you don't know what an inverter is, it's essentially a unit that just changes the voltage from 12 volts, which is what the battery is, up to 230 volts, which is the voltage you need to be able to run just standard plug-in things. <laughs> the only reason we really need this is because we have an induction hob. I think other than that, there isn't really anything that we need a plug for apart from charging laptops. Most of the things that we have, so phones, tablets, um, like watches and things like that, they all charge off USB ports, which we have in the van anyway, which is all 12 volts. But the laptop, because it uses quite a lot of power to charge, it needs to be done through a plug. And I've searched far and wide to try and find something that can charge a laptop off of 12 volts rather than going through a plug because all that plug thing does when you charge your laptop is it changes it from 230 down to 12 or i think it's 20 for the laptops 20 volts and then charges it that way so ideally you don't really want to be going from 12 to 230 and then back down to 12 again just to charge a laptop the only thing i found that comes anywhere close to that is one of those um like car chargers that you plug in I think some of them you can get that can charge up to 60 watts, which is what the laptop needs. But inside this box, we have our lovely inverter and I'm hoping that we have all the cables and fittings and everything we need to get it all installed, up and running and working as it should. If any of you are interested, we bought nearly all of our electrical stuff, apart from like the hob and a couple of sockets from 12 volt planet. It's a pretty good go-to if you're looking for anything 12 volt. Submit a photo of your project to win 50 quid. Oh, maybe we should do that. Oh, look how big it is. <laughs> I knew it was going to be big, but I didn't know it was going to be that big. Right, cable. Got all kinds of different cable here. This is 70 millimeter cable. It's the same cable that I've used for the batteries. It recommends to use this size cable. Sorry, not the red one, that's smaller. The reason being is that cable thickness is determined by the amount of amps that is going through it, not the voltage. So because we're trying to power an induction hob that uses 2000 watts on a 12 volt battery, it means that it's going to be going up to about 300 amps of current. Just to give you a little bit of perspective, our tiny house, which runs entirely off of 230 volts, we have a 32 amp cable powering the whole house. And it seems a bit funny really that to power one induction hob, we have to use cable that's 10 times thicker than the cable we use to power the whole house. Oh my, get me on, that's heavy. God, it's like a concrete block, but heavier. So we've decided to go for a Victron Phoenix inverter. It's a smart one, which means that you can basically control the whole thing off your phone. You don't have to manually switch it on and off and it does like loads of other clever things as well. But I'm just gonna check the manual one more time just to make sure I know exactly what I'm doing. And then hopefully we get it all fitted up and running and we're one step closer to being off grid. volt connections done connected to the battery I now need to run the AC output through the consumer unit connect it up to the socket circuit
it's such a squish under this bed. So annoying. Keep banging my head on the roof, but I think we're there. Don't judge my electrical tidiness because I know exactly where everything goes. I say this quite often, but restriction breeds creativity. So if you haven't got much space to work with, then you've got to get a bit creative with it. I think we're ready to fire up the inverter though. I'm just going to run through all of the system to make sure it's all done properly before we fire it up because we don't want to electrocute anyone. So to start off, this is our lovely inverter. I mounted it upside down because I needed all the connections at the top rather than at the bottom because that would have been a bit of a nightmare but in the top we've got the two big power cables that are coming from the battery so the red and the black and then on the right we've got the the ac out which goes into the consumer unit and then that white cable connects up to all the other sockets in the van so essentially power comes in it does its thing and then it goes out of there through the safety box and then out to the sockets. On the main power end, I've got a 300 amp breaker, which is connected on the positive lead, the red one, so that if the current from the battery exceeds 300 amps, then it will just shut off the power rather than causing any damage to the inverter or the cables or anything like that. But everything's connected up correctly. So I think the only thing left to do is just to power it up. I'm a little bit scared about doing it, but if I flick the terminal on the breaker, then we have power. Oh, I've got a light down here, which is connected to the main socket. So if we put that there, if all goes well, then this should come on. So inverters on and then RCD on and then 16 amp breaker on. <gasps> Oh my goodness. We have power! And nothing's caught fire. It's always a bit of a worry with electrics if something's gonna go wrong. Oh my goodness, I'm so happy that works. Nothing's tripped, no RCD trip, nothing like that. Oh my God, that's so exciting. And then if I turn it off, boom. <laughs> With all this Victron stuff, you can get an app on your phone to control everything. So on the app, you can see I've got the, the shunt at the top and then I've got the battery charger, then the inverter and then the DC to DC charger. So if I go on the shunt, that basically tells me everything that's happening within the system and the kind of percentage of the battery and everything like that. So at the moment, I'm not hooked up to anything and 120 watts ish is being drawn from the battery, which is the inverter and that light. So if I turn it off through this way, and there you go, drops all the way down to 10, which I think is something else that's running. I'm not sure what it is. Oh, I think it's the, just the standby on the inverter that's probably drawing that. I never really realized how inefficient that light bulb was. But it's using about 110 watts of power just to have this light on, which is quite a lot in 12 volt terms. The thing that I'm gonna be looking forward to the most though is working out how much electricity our hob uses when we're using it. And then we can use that to determine how many batteries we need to get. Because at the moment we only have the one battery and if this doesn't pull too much power, then we might be able to just stick with the one, possibly get two. We were planning on getting three for when we go off grid, but it really depends on how much power our hob uses really. And then we can also use that to determine how many solar panels we need on the roof. And yeah, just knowing how much power we're using with the inverter and everything else as well. Yeah, inverter up and running, really happy with that. Wasn't too complicated, just a bit of wiring and mounting on the wall. I can't believe how heavy that thing was. Absolutely weighed a ton. Well, I'm gonna screw this grill over the top so nobody can touch anything nasty, have a bit of a tidy up. But I do really hope you enjoyed this video. Give it a massive thumbs up if you did. I don't know whether you've learned anything or not. Probably not. You've probably learnt how not to wire the back of your van. But until next one, guys, have a safe drive, stay alive, have a lovely day. Try not to spill anything, and we'll see you next time.